guys, welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to make gulurakia, which is Greece's most well-known cookie. It's a Greek butter cookie and I'm making mine lemon flavored because they just, they're out of this world with lemon. You can use any citrus that you have on hand or whatever your favorite citrus is to flavor these cookies. They're simple to make easy and they make so many. I love to get my, um, my kids to help me out with this. They have a lot of fun making different shapes. We'll talk about that when we get to it, but let's go over the ingredients and then we're going to get started. The ingredients are really basic. You probably already have them around your house if you bake. Um, we're going to need some pure vanilla extract, some butter. Uh, this makes about almost 100 cookies, so we're going to use a whole pound of butter, unsalted butter always, um, two lemons that I'm going to use the zest of. We have two yolks, four um, eggs, four whole eggs some sugar, heavy whipping cream, and in here I have all-purpose flour, salt, and baking powder. That's it. That's all you need. And then later on, we're just going to need some more eggs just to kind of glaze the cookies and create an egg wash, but we'll get to that when we get to it. What we're going to do, I'm making mine in my stand mixer just because it's so much easier to do it in here. It's kind of like a heavy dough, so if you have a stand mixer, it's going to really make your life easy. I'm going to begin by putting my butter and my sugar in there. And you always want to make sure that the butter is room temperature and nice and soft. That's going to help all the ingredients come together easily and it won't be clumpy. So in goes my butter with my sugar. I'm going to beat this um, with the flat beater attachment until it's really nice and fluffy. That just takes a couple of seconds. So if your butter is at room temperature and nice and soft, everything comes together really quickly. I'm going to add two nice, generous teaspoons of pure vanilla extract and let it beat up a little bit more. Once that's done, take a spatula and scrape down the sides. And to this, we're going to add our egg yolks and our eggs. And you also want to make sure that those are room temperature as well. Now, while that's going to be beating, we'll start it off on slow. I'm just going to zest these two lemons. And these are pretty big size lemons. Zest has more flavor than the actual juice does. So we'll use the zest. When you're zesting any kind of citrus, you want to make sure that you're only getting the shiny part. Once you get to the white or light yellow part, you don't want to zest that. That's not uh, sweet or flavorful. It's bitter. And I couldn't do this without my microplane, so you're going to want to get yourself one if you don't have it. Just going to give this a nice big mix. And I'll increase the speed in my mixer. So you want to beat it on high until it's really nice and creamy and fluffy. Then we're going to add our heavy whipping cream. And as that's beating, I'm just going to add the flour a little bit at a time until it all comes together. So once all the flour is absorbed, you're going to want to check your dough to make sure it's not too wet. If it is a little bit on the wet side, you're going to want to add a little bit more, like maybe half a cup of all-purpose flour. It just depends on your flour, how it is. And that should do the trick. 
Okay, so now the, do the dough is all together and it's almost done, we're almost there. What you're going to want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees and then you're going to leave your dough alone um, covered so it can rest a little bit, about 30 minutes or so. And that's important so that way when you're going to form your little cookies, they don't fall apart. The dough does need to rest at least uh, 30 minutes. So you can use that time to sort of clean up. I'm going to transfer it into this bowl. So now I'm just going to cover this up and let it rest for 30 minutes. In that time, my oven will heat up. I'll clean up a bit. And then we'll go on to forming our cookies. So while my dough is rising, lots of you had asked how you can help support the channel. And if we have any affiliate links, Amazon is our partner. So um, help us out. So I'm an Amazon affiliate. I shop on Amazon all the time for everything, almost everything. It's just so convenient. I have a Prime membership. It just comes to my house makes it really easy. I know a lot of you also shop on Amazon, so a really nice way to support our channel without it costing you anything extra is by clicking on our affiliate links. And a lot of times I'll put the links underneath the videos in the description box, like the most common things that I use around the kitchen. For example, in this video, my microplane I use to zest an orange. I use this mixer a lot, which I love. So I'll post the links down below. You can get them on Amazon. You don't even have to get these exact things. As long as you click on the link and it takes you to Amazon, whatever you buy, even if it's something like yarn for knitting or I don't know, something like a plastic, plastic storage containers, whatever it is, we, uh, you support our channel by clicking on our links. So if you can do that, that would be nice. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks guys. So our kulurake dough has rested for 30 minutes. My oven is nice and hot. It's preheated at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure you have some half sheet or some baking trays lined with parchment paper ready. You're going to need about four or five of them. And then what I did, I took uh, three or four egg yolks and I just mixed them with some water. This is going to create a nice egg wash on top, which is going to give them a really beautiful golden shiny color. Now, the first step is, like I said, again, this makes a lot of cookies and it's perfect for giving out to neighbors, friends, family or if you really want to eat them all, you can, they store well for a couple of weeks in the pantry in an airtight container. So now, or what you can do, you can just use half the dough and it freezes well. Just wrap the other half tightly in plastic wrap, put it in a freezer tight bag and keep it in your freezer. It'll stay in there for like about a month until you're ready to use it. When you're ready to use it, defrost it overnight in your refrigerator, take it out, let it come to room temperature and just continue as we're going to do right now. We're going to make a little like these are like golf ball or walnut sized ball little rounds so you're going to want to do that first and then we're going to roll them out into mostly braids but you can pretty much do almost any shape and my son Isa is going to come out and help me in a little bit because kids love to do this kind of stuff you're going to want to get all of, all the help you can get and they're going to make really cool shapes with it they're going to have a lot of fun you're going to make memories and super yummy cookies Okay, so you're not going to use any additional flour to roll these out. These are going to roll out pretty easy if you've let the dough rest. If the dough is a little bit sticky for you to use, you can put a little bit of flour and knead it separately and then make sure you don't roll these out on any flour, otherwise they're not going to come out buttery and nice once they bake. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll this with your hand until you create about an 8 inch long cylinder. just like that. It's about right. And then you're going to fold them in half and then you can twist them to create a little braid and then put them on your baking sheet. Roll them in half, twist like that. So you're really not applying pressure when you're rolling. You're just sort of pushing it up and down on your work surface. surface. Hold it in half and then just turn it until you get this beautiful shape. Now you can do this shape. You can do lots of other shapes too. You can just keep it plain just like that. You can do this shape. 
You can also make like little swirly circles. And the dough is very forgiving. If it starts to separate, it just sticks right back together. You can do, do these circles like S-shape both ways. You get the picture. You can pretty much make any shape you want. You could do letters. Whatever you want. Let your kids have fun with this. I'm going to continue to roll these out and then we'll pop them in the oven as soon as they're done. Lisa's entrees. <laughs> Lisa loves to cook, so. Wow. It's coming out so easy this time. Yeah. Too. Now you're a pro. Oh my! Uh, Spider face. Wow, you lift it up. So once you get two trays ready, you can just brush them with the egg wash, really um, generously, and then we're going to pop them in the oven and let them bake for between 20, 25, sometimes 30 minutes, as long as it takes for them to get golden brown. Now, if you don't have an, an oven that's a convection oven that distributes the heat evenly, you're going to want to switch the trays, the bottom one to the top, halfway through baking so that way they don't burn and they cook evenly. And I'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out. So my Greek butter cookies took about 25 minutes to bake uh, total. And uh, we actually made four to five trays. All of these cookies, this tray is still kind of hot. So what you want to do when they come out of the oven, you want them to cool completely. So leave them alone for about 10 minutes until they cool. You can put them on a, on a wire rack if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And we have all these different shapes that we made. We have these really nice swirly S's. Isa made some stars. I mean, we got creative. We made a C and all different ones. Honestly, these little braid looking ones are totally my favorite. I know they're more traditional looking. I have my cup of tea ready because these go great with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or even a glass of milk. But I'm going to bite into these and show you how nice and crisp and buttery and delicious they are. I can even smell the lemon. It's just, it's just so nice. So let me show you. They're supposed to be nice and crisp. So you want, you're looking for this nice golden color when they bake. Look at how nice and crumbly and buttery they are on the inside. Not too sweet. You get the hint of lemon in the background. So good, so delicious. I'm going to put the link to the recipe in the description box down below. As always, it takes you straight to the website, www.demetriusdishes.com. The exact measurements are on there, so don't worry. Sometimes I get questions like, how much of this or how much of that? It's all on the website, so make sure you check it out. Let me know how they turned out. Let me know how you like them. What do you want to know how to, what would you like me to teach you how to make next? Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you want to learn how to make next. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.